So in this video, we're gonna go over maybe the three main objectives we're gonna try and accomplish with our accompaniment. Certainly, you can make an argument that accompanists do more than this, but uh, these are three pretty big goals that if we can accomplish well, we'll have a decent accompaniment, assuming the mechanics of the actual music are correct. First thing is that accompaniments provide harmony. They do this by playing notes that are not the melody, but part of the chords and uh, also maybe not part of the chords, but to give a harmonic taste or basis for the, the songs going on. And those combine together to give you a key center where home is. And then you can put all the other things in context. Are we at home? Are we away from home and trying out new things? Are we working through stuff or are we at chords that are ringing us back? I'm gonna play a song for you that, um, that you'll hear that the chords that I'm playing uh, have function and they give you where a sense of home is. And, and I'm gonna keep the, the accompaniment without any specific rhythm, just strum when I need a new chord so that you don't get these two tangled up together. So it goes, You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. You can hear that because of the chords, I, you know, the notes that make the chords I was playing, that at the end there, we came back to home. Take my sun, that's my five chord, pushing us back to away. Has a sense of being in a major key and uh, all the things that go with it. Okay, I'm gonna reharmonize that melody now with chords that will make us feel like we're in a different key, okay? And you will be able to tell that the harmony you provide drastically changes the perception of the, the tune itself. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Very different. So I um, played the first one in C major, which maybe you recognize because we learned to play that song there um, through the transcription songs that we did. Um, I reharmonized it in A minor, which is the relative minor. That's the same scale, but it starts in a different place. Uh, home is in a different place. The chords that I used are still one, four, and five, but they're different chords now. And uh, it makes us feel like we're in a different key, uh, mood changes, function of these things, while the jobs are still the same, feel very different, right? Okay, harmony. The When we write our piano part, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that the notes convey the chords correctly and the sounds that we want so that we can tell what key we're in and so that the function of the chords is clear. All right, provide rhythm. So in addition to you know harmonic structure, it gives us a tempo and a meter. So if I'm playing something like this. V, Y, X, N, W, V. Well, you're getting boom chuck, boom chuck, boom chuck. And it feels like we're in a kind of two-step, boom chuck, left, right, left, right, because it's a repeated two pattern, right? It also tells us that our tempo is bum, 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 or bum, 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 depending on what you want, right? Um, you know, if we have different, uh, like for instance, if we're in three, you'll hear these strums put an emphasis on every first one of a group of three. So it could be like, you can hear that those group into threes, right? And finally, rhythm also gives us a sense of style. So for instance, if I play sway with just straight quarter notes, it'll sound like, when marimba rhythm starts to play, Dance with me, make me sway Like a lazy ocean hugs the shore Hold me close, sway me more It's fine, 
it does give us tempo and meter. It does give us chords and function, but style can be conveyed by the way you, you, know, you strum pattern in this case, or the rhythms you write into your accompaniment. So that's very different than our syncopated beat. When marimba rhythm starts to play, dance with me, make me sway. And you can even make it more extreme into a style with other percussive things like when marimba rhythm starts, let me think, starts to play, dance with me, make me sway. Right? With chunks and, and flourishes and things. You can get um, music that sounds like it comes from a certain ethnicity or culture uh, or style or just convey a certain kind of energy, whether it's syncopated or not. If I play, you know, like... sort of muted chunking style that suggests jazz or something like that so style is an important thing that comes from there um, finally you know we support the melody um, so there's functional reasons for that uh, the first way that this happens is you just embody the melody or write it right into your accompaniment so that it's there and it's present it makes it very clear to the listener and anybody that you're accompanying the performer where you are in the piece at any given time. It has a functional help as well. Uh, for instance, if you're a singer and you have an accompaniment, um, it's really nice for you or your choir to know what the melody sounds like. They don't have the advantage of um, putting their finger down on a fret or pushing a button down or pushing a key and getting a sound to come out that's always gonna be the same there. They have to remember it and approximate that with muscle memory in their in their voice right inside their you know in their neck and combine air and stuff and so it's really nice if there's a reference there for them sometimes the entire melody is there sometimes just the entrances or tricky spots or the endings are there to help stabilize people and you know sometimes vocal music doesn't even have the melody in it at all but we often do okay that's an important thing the other thing is that the melody is not always going to be present and so we can support the melody by picking up interest and, uh, and filling in between the phrases or even taking a solo when the melody is not there. Um, so for instance, if I play um, like... You're cheating hard will make you weak You're crying That's pretty basic, um, you know, it's giving us a tempo and a meter, a kind of a shuffle style. Chords definitely key in function. Um, I'm not playing the melody there. Strumming instruments often don't do that, but, but what they do a lot of is they fill in between. So let me try this again. I'm gonna change the chords up just a little bit too to match the style. You're cheating hard. You can hear that my left hand got active moving up and down, shifting the chords when the phrases of the singing were not done. And at the end, I put a, a, a triple strum roll in there and things, and I'm picking up interest. And it's done through, in this case, sometimes, you know, like style and, and rhythm, and sometimes through shifting my chords and things. Um, you can also have somebody sitting off in the background going like, you're cheating heart will make you weep you'll cry and cry and playing little melodies and things in between but that's part of the accompaniment's job is to fill that in we will try and accomplish all these things in some way or another when we write our melody sorry our accompaniment for um, falling in love and next video we'll be looking at some um, pre-made piano accompaniments and seeing if we can find these elements in there so we have models to to copy all right